Amino acids are the building blocks which are important in the first stage of protein synthesis. The name comes from the fact that attached to the central carbon atom is an amine group and adjacent to this is a carboxylic acid group. There are 20 different amino acids, each with a different R group or side chain, and it's from these 20 different amino acids that the thousands of different proteins are made up. First, there is a simple amino acid or polypeptide chain. This is the primary structure and is our unfolded protein held together by peptide bonds. Protein folding begins here, where the primary structure is developed into the secondary structure, with either alpha helices or beta pleated sheets, held together by hydrogen bonds between the carboxyl and amine group. Then, these secondary structures fold further until they have formed tertiary structure. The bonds that are involved in holding this structure together are again hydrogen bonds, ionic interactions, disulfide bonds, hydrophobic interactions, and van der Waals dispersion forces. Protein folding is essential for the sequence of amino acid, also known as the primary structure, to obtain this functional three-dimensional structure, also known as the tertiary structure. This occurs with an intermediate stage, known as the secondary structure. If a mutation occurs within the primary structure, the sequence of amino acid, it ultimately affects the tertiary structure. Mutations within a polypeptide chain are not the only thing that can go wrong. Complications at a later stage of protein formation can occur as the protein folds, such as protein misfolding. Molecular chaperones are a family of helper proteins which facilitate the pro protein folding process within the cells. Chaperones are designed to reduce the chances of complications or to reverse misfolding. Protein folding to native states can occur intrinsically without the aid of external agents or it can occur with the help of molecular chaperones. As stated, proteins may need assistance in achieving its final conformational shape. Chaperones aid the folding of a nascent polypeptide chain to its three-dimensional native state in an ATP-dependent manner. The amino acid sequence of a protein fundamentally determines its native conformation. However, cells synthesize a remarkable amount of protein in a very short period of time. If a cytosol is full to capacity, the chances of protein association or aggregation increases dramatically. Most molecular chaperones operate by binding and stabilizing unfolded or partially folded proteins, subsequently preventing these proteins from being degraded after misfolding. However, there is a subgroup of chaperones known as chaperonin, which directly facilitate the folding of proteins in an ATP dependent manner. This slide shows chaperone action and chaperonin. Chaperonins are double ringed hollow cylindrical protein complexes. The nascent or unfolded polypeptide enters the hollow cylinder. Once it's encapsulated within the chaperonin's vertical cavity, a cap is attached to the head of the chaperonin enclosing the unfolded protein. Lid closure is triggered by the process of ATP hydrolysis. Whilst concealed within the chaperonin, an ideal environment is created away from the watery cytosol and other proteins which may interfere with the folding procedure. The inner wall of the chaperonin are lined with hydrophobic amino acids which interact with the hydrophobic region of the polypeptide chain and stabilizes it, giving it a chance to fold. Once the correct folding has occurred, the cap is removed and the protein is in its native state and released. Here are some examples of mechanisms to manage unfolded or misfolded proteins. They'll be explained over the next three slides. The first is degradation by proteasome. Second is UPR or the unfolded protein response. And the third one is apoptosis or programmed cell death. ERAD or endoplasmic reticulum associated degradation is when misfolded proteins are removed from the endoplasmic reticulum into the cytoplasm where they are degraded by the ubiquitin proteasome system. So as you can see here, you've got translation of the protein from, in, uh, from the ribosome, 
transported into the endoplasmic reticulum. Um, it's folded and modified. If it's correctly folded, it goes into the Golgi apparatus to be further um, modified and produced. If it's misfolded, however, then it's transported out and into the ubiquitin protein, proteasome system and then it becomes degraded. UPR, unfolded protein response. This is the pathway to decrease misfolded proteins in the ER lumen. This pathway activates the regulation of protein translation, also known as translation attenuation, and induces UPR transcriptional genes, which in turn leads to the production of chaperones. Induction of apoptosis or programmed cell death. If the ER stress continues for a prolonged period of time, and then the um, unfolded protein response or the UPR and the ERAD or endoplasmic reticulum associated degradation can't cope, this triggers the induction of apoptosis, programmed cell death, which is the last resort. A shows molecular chaperone suppressing the neurotoxicity of amyloid forming proteins by preventing their conversion between native and toxic conformations. B shows molecular chaperones preventing prefibular intermedi intermediates formation. C shows molecular chaperones preventing the conversion between prefibrillar intermediates and mature fibrils. Now, irrespective of the neuroprotective mechanisms that they invoke, an excess of chaperones in cells leads to the formation of detergent soluble and amorphous aggregates, which is shown by D. These aggregates are degraded more readily by the proteolytic machinery thus preventing aberrant protein interactions that would otherwise lead to a cascade of events that culminate in neurodegeneration. Alzheimer's disease is a neurodegenerative disease in which insoluble beta amyloid plaques accumulate and aggregate within the structure of the brain. These plaques occur due to protein misfolding, which leads to exposure of hydrophobic amino acids. These would normally be concealed within the actual protein if correct folding took place. This exposure of water repelling amino acids caused the protein to have a high affinity for other hydrophobic amino acids and other protein molecules. Interactions between different proteins and hydrophobic amino acids create insoluble aggregates called amyloid plaques. These aggregates are very toxic to neurons and can cause neuronal cell death.